Hey guys, my name is Kirsty. Welcome back to Upside Down Books. Today we're going to be doing a book haul. Wow, the sun is coming in now. God, I haven't had this issue for ages. Stop it, son. This is actually quite annoying. Dim that bad boy down. So today I am coming at you with a book haul and this is not a monthly book haul. This is actually just a book haul over the last few months. I've been owing you a book haul for a long time and truth be told, I thought I didn't have that many books to show you, but I am coming at you with a 33 count book haul today. Now the irony of this is that I'm actually on a book buying ban, so my ability to acquire books astounds even me. It is a magical, mysterious thing. I wish I could blame it all on like review copies and audiobooks, but that's just simply not the case. If you missed the memo, um, then I am on a book buying ban at the moment. I am participating in my own challenge called the 300 TBR challenge. If you want to know more about that and what it is, how it works, I am tracking it over on Instagram. So you can follow me there at Ozbooks now, and I have a highlight called 300 100 TBR and in that highlight it explains how the ban works, how I'm tracking it, and which books I'm reading towards that goal. Now to be fair on myself, a lot of the books that I'm hauling today are actually from prior to this book buying ban starting, so there are a lot of books here because I went on holiday after my last book haul and I let loose on some bookstores. And I think that's where most of the damage is coming from. This is not entirely me breaking my, my book buying ban, but I will let you know which ones I did break the buying ban for. I've also got a lot of audiobooks to show you this month for a very particular reason, in that Audible has changed the way that their subscription works, and I will go into that when we do my audiobooks. One note, and one thing that I did want to say is my book hauls are going to be working a little bit differently because of this buying ban that I am on. So obviously this, we have so many books to cover today because I am doing about two months worth of books and this just happens to be quite a lot of books I've acquired in that time, but for the foreseeable future I am just going to be doing uh, book hauls when I have a good amount of books to show you. That might be within a month, it might be within three months, I don't know. I'm not going to stress about it, I'm going to take that pressure away uh, because I'm theoretically not supposed to be collecting any books but obviously I will in different avenues other than me just buying them. So yeah, don't expect regular book hauls uh, for a little bit because I'm going to be trying really hard not to be collecting an excessive amount of books. So sit back, relax, get yourself a cup of tea and come and join me on an adventure as we go through all the new books that have been added to my shelves despite the fact that I really don't have room for them. So we're going to start with audiobooks as always and I have made myself a little list on my phone because I will forget which ones I've got. Uh, but I do have quite a few audiobooks to share with you. So let's crack right on into it. So the first audiobook I have to mention, I have already mentioned in my wrap up and that was After Story by Larissa Barrent. This is an Australian First Nations uh, author and book and it is fantastic. I've raved about this so you can watch my wrap up if you want to hear more of my thoughts on that one. I thought the audiobook performance was fantastic and it. I got this one because it was a free book of the month, which is one of the features that Audible offers for subscribers. Uh, so you can get the Editor's Pick of the Month, which is an audiobook for free that you get to keep. Um, and and on that note, let me explain what changes have happened that have caused the rest of the flurry of the audiobooks I'm about to share with you. So Audible has recently changed its subscription of the way it works. It has done this in, at least in Australia, and it has introduced this feature called Premium Plus. I don't know why it's called Premium Plus, because as far as I'm aware, everyone gets it if you subscribe. It's not just uh, like you don't pay extra for it. And they've basically got their own library of free books now. So there are a bunch of free titles that Audible is now offering on a loan. So if you were to cancel your subscription, then you wouldn't get to keep them, but they're rotating them, I believe, on about a 12 monthly basis. So for a whole year, you have access to whichever titles are on the Premium Plus offering. And you can download them so you can listen to them offline. And it just basically means there's a whole lot more books you can get with your subscription now. It's, you're not just limited to the one book per month that you're sort of just getting, which I think has put a lot of people off. So if you're in Australia or in the rest of the world and that's also changed there, I have no idea for the rest of the world, um, check that out because it's pretty awesome. So uh, there are a few a few books, a handful, a couple of books um, that I have downloaded because I was quite excited about this change and I thought it was awesome. But the, one of the books I've actually got with my subscription is What the Wind Knows. So this is historical fiction and I love the cover for it. I've been wanting to read this for a really, really long time. It's been on my radar for what feels like forever and I was really excited to finally bite the bullet and actually download a copy for myself from Audible. I find Audible and audiobooks really satisfying in this way as like a little cheat 
shortcut loop thing um, to bump certain books up to the top of my TBR. It is so awesome for that. I also then got the next editor's book of the month, uh, which was The Midnight Library. I have also read this one and I have talked about it in my wrap up. So again, you can watch that video if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this one. This is a really, really popular book at the moment. And I, yeah, I thought it was really good, but I did have some queries and question marks, I guess, over the trigger warnings or lack thereof for this book. <laughs> Three more audiobooks. I know, this is just outrageous to have this many audiobooks. The next audiobook I have to haul is one that I did actually get with my subscription, and that was Snow Like Ashes. Now, I have been wanting to get this since its release, and this was a 2014 book, so I have had my eye on this for the longest of times. It is just one of those books that has always been on a wish list, always been on a list somewhere that I'm like, oh, I really want to get that, I really want to get that, but for whatever reason, I have never actually gone and got it. I think partially because I don't really ever see this in bookstores, so maybe that has something to do with it, but I'm really excited to finally read this. I have just... Mm, this is one of these books that was, like, at the beginning of my obsession with books and this whole booktube and book blogging sphere this was one of these books that I first discovered so I this is going to be like a really big thing to read for me <laughs> because it's just feels like I'm finally getting around to that original list of things that I just haven't got to yet so I'm really excited about it it is a fantasy novel it is now part of a trilogy so I'll be looking forward to continuing the series if I like it we have like kingdoms and heroes and warriors in this book so it's that kind of epic fantasy vibe now the next two books are some books that I have acquired from the premium plus section of audible so technically I'm not hauling these because I don't own them. I have them for as long as they are available on Audible and as soon as they roll over and refresh that list I will lose access to them. Uh, but if it is going to be for 12 months and as long as they say then I should get around to them by then so I wanted to hold them and tell you guys what I'm planning on reading. So the first one is Sense and Sensibility. I know, plot twist. But I, I saw it available and I thought you know what I want to give this a go. I've actually got a couple of copies, physical copies of Sense and Sensibility. So the edition that I own is the Penguin Classics Clothbound edition. I actually got a box set of all the Jane Austens and these because Love and Friendship had a typo in the spelling error. Um, so they were off for really cheap. This is several years ago. Anyway, um, so this is the copy I have, but I've read Pride and Prejudice and I really hated the reading experience. Hold the phone. There is something in here. <laughs> I have never opened this apparently. Oh cute, it shows you what all the books are. Look at that! Oh wow, there's a whole list on the back of all the books that Penguin does in Clothbound editions. There you go, kids. Be sure to open the books that you haul, lest there is a little hidey thing inside. That's a bit exciting. I'm honestly at this point not sure if I'll ever read a physical copy of Sense and Sensibility, and I've certainly been putting it off, so I'm very excited to read the audiobook, and I hope that I enjoy it. I would really like to have a better experience with this than I did with Pride and Prejudice because Sense and Sensibility, the film adaptation, is one of my all-time favourite films. I love this story. So that brings me to the final audiobook that I want to haul for you today, which is again part of the Premium Plus, and that is White Trash Warlock. Um, I ha this is a new release as of this year. I have been wanting to read this. Um, I just... <laughs> I've seen some good reviews for it actually and I just think that the title sounds hilarious um, and I think it's going to be satirical is my guess but I'm very intrigued to read it so when I saw that that was one of their books that was available I just thought well yeah obviously I have to give this a go. I think that the blurb for this sounds hilarious. If you haven't read it then go and read it. It involves like a, a main character, the guy finding all the local magicians dead and like an elf who broke his heart is involved. I don't know, it just sounds quite funny. So I am hoping to get a good few laughs out of this one. Okay, so that is all of the audiobooks that I have to show you. So I think next we will go on to my advanced reader copies. We'll talk about those. I really have quite the number to go through, which is reasonably alarming, but we shall do that next. I, ha I have honestly quite a few to go through. I've acquired a few more um, ebooks as well through NetGalley. So let's talk about those first because I, as we know, I always forget if the book is not in front of me. So the first book I want to talk about is Shady Hollow. Now this one is coming out, I believe, in January next year, so January 2022, and it's coming out in a new edition. So this book has already been out in the wild since like 2017, 15, I don't know, a while. But it's been released in a new format, but obviously I'm going to be reviewing this by digital version, so I'm not really aware of what the differences are. However, I think that the cover is adorable. I also really like the description. So this one is set in the woodlands and it's like in this charming little village that is called Shady Hollow. And then there's a murder that happens. So a, to a toad is found in like the river or the pond or whatever and he's face down and he's dead and they're all like, oh my gosh, murder has never happened here before. So I believe that one of the characters becomes sort of a detective and trying to solve the case and I just thought this sounded adorable. So I was like, sign me up. I would like a copy of that one. The next one I have to show you is one that is also coming out in a while, in February of 2022, and that is The Verifiers. 
Uh, I thought this one sounded quite interesting, so I am keen to get into this one. Obviously, these books I will probably read much, much closer to their release date, so you will have to stay tuned for my thoughts on those ones. Ironically, this is also about an amateur sleuth, and I recommend you go and read the blurb if you want to know more about this one, because we will be here forever if I tell you about every single book. The next ebook I have to talk about is called Echoes of War. This is obviously historical fiction. It's, it's got like a very classic historical fiction cover for like, they all, all the historical fictions are looking like this at the moment, and I'm really excited to read this one. It's coming out at the very end of September, um, so which should hopefully be, I, I think this video will be out before this book is out, and it is set in Italy during World War II, and that was what really pulled me in because it's been a really long time, and I honestly couldn't tell you if ever I've read historical fiction, World War II, when it's set in Italy, so the main focus is Mussolini rather than Hitler. Not that you can really have one without the other, but yeah, I'm really excited to get into this one. I've been really digging my historical fiction at the moment, and I love the cover for this one. It is same, same, but I just think it is more eye catching and refreshing with the blue colors. So I am excited to read this. Hopefully, I will get to it very soon. So, those are all of the ebooks that I have to show you that are review copies. Now, let's move on to the physical pile. So, the first one is one I've already read, and that is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sasuki Natsukawa. I, if I'm saying that wrong, wrong I apologize. This has been translated into English for the first time, but it has already been published in Japanese. And this is adorable for such a short, like, 200 page book. I actually put quite a lot of tabs into this one, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, so, this was sent to me by Picador. Thank you very much to them for sending me this. Uh, I just think that this is an adorable, very happy book. If you want a book that's a little bit like a warm hug and a pick-me-up, then this is definitely the one for you. It is about courage and learning to be empathetic towards your friends and learning to love books again and really appreciate what books are for. It's a really, really sweet little tale. That one is already out, so you can already go and get your copy of it. Next, I have to show you a book which is not yet out, and that is Selfless by Aviva. So this is a very popular or a highly anticipated book within certain circles because Aviva is a musician. I don't know. I'm not one of these people in this circle. I am just genuinely excited for this book, external to these other reasons. Um, and I love this book because it's actually a paperback with a dust jacket, which I think is just totally wild and very exciting. So this is what it looks like naked. I just, I love that somebody has gone to the effort to put a dust jacket on a paperback. It's just completely bizarre. Utterly strange, totally unnecessary, but I am living for it. I find the design of this book honestly quite creepy with the eye on the front cover, but there's also something very alluring about it. I'm quite excited. So this one is coming out in October, so you do have to... Ooh, ooh. This one is coming out in October, you do have to wait for it, but I think it should be quite good. Um, I believe it is... Um, so it's set in a world where there are radical laws which condemn forms of self-expression and creativity, so I think it's going to be quite the interesting read. I'm expecting some pretty dark themes going by the front cover. And this one was sent to me by Pam McMillan, so thank you very much to Pam McMillan for a copy of this one. And the next book is This Glorious Hardback of Forestborn by Aileen Audrey Becker, and I am I am so obsessed with this cover. I just think this book is stunning. This one is already out and was sent to me by Tortine, so thank you very much to them for a copy of this. I am just in love with this book. I am hoping to read this very, very soon. It's pretty plain without the jacket on, but it does have a lovely little bird. I have been fighting an uphill battle to get through all of my arcs lately. There are just, there are just so many guys. I'm just, I'm very overwhelmed at the moment. But I have heard some good things, not amazing things, so I'm, I'm curious to see how I go. Good but not amazing things about this. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that I'm gonna love it because it just looks so magical. Uh, this one is about a shapeshifter and there is magic and wilderness and all of that good stuff, so I'm very excited to tuck into it. The next book I swear to god I had already hauled, but I could not find evidence of me doing so. So if I have already hauled it and somehow missed it, I do apologize, but that is The House of Always by Jen Lyons. So this is the fourth installment in the Chorus of Dragons series by her. I am so excited to read it. It is big, but not too big. And um, uh, yeah, I'm just... The Ruin of Kings is book one, and I, I just don't have enough words to explain how much I love this series. This is out now. I am a little bit behind and not having got to it yet. I am like psyching myself up to tuck into it. I just need to read a few more of my own books before I continue on my, my crusade to finish all my arcs. But I I am so excited about this book. So thank you very much to Tor again for sending me a copy of this. Count me in the top ranking fans, please, because yeah, I'm obsessed. Kieran is like my number one. If you've read this series, then you know what I mean. But if you haven't read this series, then please go and get yourself a copy of The Ruin of Kings, because 
Oh my god, this is this is the next big thing, kids. I'm telling you now. So the next few books are from Harley Quinn, and the first one is The Unusual Abduction of Avery Conifer by Isla Evans. Now this is the book club pick of the month for the Bookstack book club by Harley Quinn. You can follow them on Facebook. I will hopefully have a link below where you can find that link and, and go through. In this book club, we're reading one book a month from their new releases, um, so it's always fun to know what's going to be announced. So this was the September book of the month, and the October book of the month has just been announced, and that is Birds of a Feather by Trisha Stringer. Um, I'm very excited to read this. My mum has actually just finished reading this one, and she thought it was fun. Fantastic. So I am looking forward to reading both of these in the near future. Um, so thank you very much to Harley Quinn for including me in their book club because it is so exciting and there are honestly some really great reads that are a little bit outside of my usual reading genre that I am thoroughly enjoying getting through. So very excited about these. The Unusual Abduction of Avery Conifer is already out but Birds of a Feather is about to come out. It is coming out in October so keep your eyes peeled for that one. And the last arc that I have to show you I do not have a finished copy for and it is from Bloomsbury and that is Reprieve by James Han Matson. Now this one is coming out in October just in time for Halloween and I'm really looking forward to reading it as a bit of a spooky read. This sounds absolutely terrifying. Um, well not terrifying it's just a bit of a psychological thriller. It is about an escape room where somebody actually gets murdered in it and about the repercussions and how they live with that sort of traumatic event for all the survivors afterwards so I am looking forward to it. It has one of my favorite taglines on here. It talks about how people are obsessed with the culture of fear and I just think that that is so accurate and so true. So I'm actually really looking forward to reading this. Um, I do find that psychological thrillers can be quite fun to read for for reasons unknown to me. I could not tell you why. So thank you very much Bloomsbury for a copy of this one. So next book, the next book I want to talk about is one that I didn't buy but my boyfriend actually gifted to me so I'm very excited about this one. And that book is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I have not read anything by Lim before but I do have a few of her books. I just love this cover. I think this might be the UK Australian edition. I think the US has a different edition, but I'm not 100% sure on that one. I think this is just beautiful. It is supposed to be a Mulan retelling, I believe. Uh, so I am looking forward to checking into this one so much. I, th the first opportunity that I get to read this, I will, but goodness knows when that will be. The next five books I wanna talk about are a bit of a special haul. So um, a bit of history that I think um, anyone who's not Australian who's watching is probably not aware of is the relationship that Australia has with their First Nations people, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, is a bit of a rough history to say the least. If you don't know anything about it I recommend reading up and learning about it. Um, but we have a week each year called NADOC week where we celebrate First Nations peoples and obviously within the literary scene that is by promoting books and reading books and I really wanted to participate a little bit more actively this year. I was inspired to do this because last year during the real peak of the Black Lives Matter movement I did a big book haul for black authors and I really enjoyed doing that and getting involved and filling my shelves with more diverse voices. So for NADOC week I thought I would do the same and pick five First Nations authors and have a read of their books and I'm honestly really excited about my picks. So the first one I have is White Girl by Toni Birch. This has been really really popular and I am really looking forward to reading it because I think I will love it. It has been shortlisted for the Miles Franklin and it was the winner of the New South Wales Premier's Awards and this is the blurb. Odette Brown has lived her whole life on the fringes of a small country town. Raising her granddaughter Sissy on her own, Odette has managed to stay under the radar of the welfare authorities who are removing Aboriginal children from their communities. When the menacing Sergeant Lowe arrives in town determined to fully enforce the law, any freedom that Odette and Sissy enjoy comes under grave threat. Odette must make the impossible choice to protect her family. So this is dealing with the Stolen Generations um, history, which I believe is a history shared or very similar with uh, Canadian First Nations people. Correct me if I'm wrong there, so Canadians might have some idea of similar things we're talking about. So I'm really really excited to read this and to read from the perspective of First Nations voice because that will be something I actually have not done before. So looking forward to this one. The next book is one that I have had my eye on because it has really hit the mainstream media and that is Too Much Lip by Melissa Lukashenko and I think that this is such a cool cover. This has also won some awards. So we've got the Queensland Literary Award and the Miles Franklin Award winner and this is the blurb for this one. Too Much Lip, her old problem from way back. And the older she got the harder it seemed to get to swallow her opinions. The avalanche of bullshit in the world would drown her if she let it. The least she could do was raise her voice in anger. Wisecracking Carrie Salter has spent a lifetime avoiding two things, her hometown and prison. But her pop is dying and she's an inch away from the lockup so she heads south on a stolen Harley. Carrie plans to spend 24 hours, tops, over the border. She quickly discovers though that Bundjalung country has a funny way of grabbing onto people. Excuse me if I'm pronouncing that 
wrong, I am not familiar with that country. Old family wounds open as the Salters fight to stop the development of their beloved river, and the unexpected arrival on the scene of a good-looking Dugai fella intent on loving her up only adds more trouble. But then Trouble is Carrie's middle name. I am expecting great things from this one, so I'm hoping that this will be a fantastic read when I get around to it. The next book I love the cover for, and this one is just smattered with different literary awards, and that is The Yield by Tara June Winch. I believe this author has actually written something else that's been really popular, but I can't remember off the top of my mind what. This one is a Miles Franklin winner, it is a Prime Minister's Literary Award winner, and it's got two awards from the New South Wales Premier's Awards. So huge, huge accolades there. And this is the blurb for this one. Knowing that he will die soon, Albert Poppy Gonda Windy takes pen to paper. His life has been spent on the Murrumbi River at Prosperous House on the Massacre Plains. Albert is determined to pass on the language of his people and everything that was ever remembered. He finds the words on the wind. August Gondawindi has been living on the other side of the world for ten years when she learns of her grandfather's death. She returns home for his burial, wrecked with grief and burdened with all she tried to leave behind. Her homecoming is bittersweet as she confronts the love of her kin and news that Prosperous is to be repossessed by a mining company. Determined to make amends, she endeavours to save their land, a quest that leads her to the voice of her grandfather and into the past, the stories of her people, the secrets of the river. I really, really like the sound of this one. I'm very much so looking forward to it. The next one is by quite a notable figure that many Australians will be familiar with, and that is Stan Grant's Australia Day. So Stan Grant is a really big uh, First Nations speaker in Australia. He does a lot of great speeches, and he is worth looking up if you have never heard of him. He's a great way to quickly learn some details about this history if you are unfamiliar with it. So I'm really looking forward to this book. Australia Day is a massively contested day in Australia because it is technically Invasion Day, so lots and lots of history to explore in this book. It's quite a short book, but I'm expecting that it is going to pack a punch. This is the blurb for this one. For Stan Grant, 26 January, Australia Day, holds all our contradictions as a nation. In this book, his long-awaited follow-up to the best-selling and critically acclaimed Talking to My Country, Stan talks about our country, about who we are as a nation, about the Indigenous struggle for belonging and identity in Australia, and what it means to be Australian. A sad, wise, beautiful, reflective, and troubled book, Australia Day asks the questions that have to be asked that no one else seems to be asking. Who are we? What is our country? And how do we move forward from here? This should be amazing and I'm so looking forward to picking it up. So the final book in this Indigenous haul that I'm sharing with you today is The Old Lie by Claire G. Coleman. I love the cover for this one and we're getting a bit of World War One historical fiction which really tickles my fancy so I'm looking forward to this and this is the blood for it. Shane Daniels and Romani Zetz have been drawn into a war that is not their own. Lives will be destroyed, families will be torn apart, trust will be broken. When the war is over, some will return to a changed world. Will they discover that glory is a lie? So quite a short blurb for that one, but I think it should be quite good reading. So again, as with most of these books, I can't wait to read this one. Right. I think we're maybe halfway there. This is just an outrageous book haul. So some of these are from my little book haul that I did when I went mad shopping on my holiday. So let's just whiz through these, I think. Uh, you will probably be familiar with many of these titles. So the first one is The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. I've seen so many amazing reviews for this one, so I've been positively itching to get my hands on a copy of this one. This is a sci-fi. I then have Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Everybody is reading Taylor Jenkins Reid's other books at the moment, so I don't think she needs any introduction here. But again, I wasn't going to get this one, but then there were so many good reviews that I couldn't help myself. The next one that you are possibly not familiar with is an historical fiction, and that is The Dust That Falls From Dreams by Louis D. Berniers. Now this one I believe is set during World War One, and it is not set in France, as you might have thought. It is actually set in Kent in England, and it is a bit of a torn love story. I have had my eye on this for a really long time, so I was thrilled to find a copy in a bookstore. Not only just the fact that it was there, but also in this edition. I've been particularly hunting for this, so I, I had a little party when I found this one. The next one is actually one I broke my buying ban for because it was $2.50 and I thought, well, I think that's worth it. And that is When Dimple Met Rishi. This is a super popular book by Sendaya Menon and I believe many of you are possibly familiar with it. If not, have a look up of it, but I think this will be a really cute little short contemporary read. The next book I have for you is The Project by Courtney Summers. Now this is a new release for 2021. I actually managed to grab a free copy of a friend for this one. So not technically breaking my ban on this one. It is a thriller, so I'm really looking forward to 
reading it. I'm I'm so excited that I've got a copy of it. So this should be good and possibly not one to read late at night. The next book I'm really excited about, but I hate this edition, and it is Fire with Fire by Destiny Soraya. I, I don't like this cover. I much, much prefer the American version of it. I just, the color combination here makes me feel sick. I really don't like it, but I do really want to read this book. And unless I bought it online, which I am just a little bit too lazy to do right now, um, I could not get that. So here we are, YA fantasy, nice sort of big book. So I'm expecting good things from this. I've heard, I've heard some good reviews. I actually haven't heard too much about this book, so I will more or less be going in blind. I then have a book whose cover I am obsessed with, and that is The Bone Shard Daughter by Andrea Stewart. It has this gorgeous sort of stone masonry look, and then this stunning red spine. I am obsessed with every design aspect of this book. This is an epic fantasy. It has empires, it has magic, it has everything I could possibly want in a book. Cannot wait to get a chance to read it. Now the next book is a book I've been wanting to read for ages, and an author who I've not mentioned for a while on this channel, I do believe. And that is The Secret Chord by Geraldine Brooks. I found a secondhand edition of this in hardback. I have specifically been wanting a hardback edition of this since this came out. And this came out like a good handful of years ago. Geraldine Brooks is a particular favourite author of mine. She writes some fantastic historical fiction, so I am I'm so excited that I finally got an edition of this book because it's just it's so pretty. How could you not love this book? The next four books I have to show you are actually part of a series and they are all secondhand and you have already seen the first one and that is this series by Philippa Gregory, I actually don't know what this series is called because she writes books that are part of multiple series. She's one of those authors, but The White Queen is actually on my September TBR and I have the next four, three books. I have a feeling there is a fifth one, but I'm not 100% sure. If you don't know, if you're new here, Philippa Gregory is an author I've been really, really, really wanting to get into. Philippa Gregory writes a lot of like medieval and, I don't know, old, old English history, which I don't know much about. And I think I would like to know more about it because I am actually British myself. So I would like to learn more about this history. And I thought that Philippa Philippa Gregory would be a fun way to do this. So when I saw this whole series in hardback in a secondhand bookstore, of course I had to pick it up. This is just a ridiculous number of books. So the final few books I have for you um, are quite exciting and a little bit, and a couple of them are a little bit different. The first one is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. I don't think I need to say much about this because if you are a YA fantasy reader, I'm sure you know about this and I'm sure you want to read it. This is a special edition. It is also signed by the uh, Australian bookstore Demix got uh-huh. Got these special red editions. Everyone else has black. I think they've run out of red editions now and I don't know if they'll be printing any more of them because Jay Kristoff himself is Australian so that was a nice little treat for us. I have read this. I will have my review up on my blog shortly so if you want my thoughts on this you can either have a read of that or you can wait until my September wrap-up to hear more about this. The final two books I have are actually non-fiction and these are the only other books aside from When Dimple Met Rishi that I broke my buying ban for since I started it. So the first one is Future Sea by Deborah Rowan Wright and this is published by the University of Chicago Press which I feel is important to say because if you're interested in that then go and have a look at their repository of books because there are so many great ones on there. Ever since reading David Attenborough's A Life on Our Planet last year I have become really really obsessed with the idea of reading more in this genre. I really want to learn more about it and I had the genius idea that if I read books then that's a really great way that I can educate myself. So I found a copy of Future Sea, which is one of the many books that are on a list that I have, which is all about non-fiction non for climate change. Uh, there's a whole long list I've got that I plan to buy and read, and hopefully one day, once I've read enough, share with you some knowledge and recommendations. But yes, I found this one in a local bookstore, so I picked it up, and I am about a third of the way through it already, and I'm finding it so interesting. Like, I'm learning so much, and I'm really, really enjoying reading non-fiction, which is weird but amazing. And that brings me to my final book which is another climate change nonfiction also published by University of Chicago Press and that is Cataclysms by Laurent Testo, Testot, but I don't know how to say that, and this one is like an environmental history, oh yes, an environmental history of humanity. So this one's a bit bigger and I haven't started this one yet, I will finish Future, future C first. Um, but I am I'm looking forward to reading this and I just love the hardback editions that these are in. So these are all the books that I have acquired since I did my last book haul. As I said, um, don't expect regular book hauls from me in the future because in theory I will not have anywhere near as many books to share with you going forwards, but knowing me I'm sure I'll find a way. I am honestly so scandalized that there are this many books for me to haul. I had no idea. I held off doing a book haul because I did not think I had this many to show you, but I probably could have split this up into two book hauls, but alas, here we are. I hope you enjoyed this haul today, and I hope you found some of these books interesting to hear about, 
Let me know down in the comments below if you read any of these and what you thought of them or if you're planning to read any and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye. Ar,